All right, we're going to continue on with this example, but looking at the speed in this case. So we're using the same example as the last video. Gross weight entering the hold, 77 tonne, ice plus 4, flight level 330, expect to hold for 45 minutes. We've already gone ahead and worked out the estimated mid-zone weight. That came out to be 75.5, so 76 tonne data. Using flight level 330, we've drawn up the table, highlighted the relevant boxes we're going to use. In this case, we're just going to be looking at the speed instead of the fuel flow. Now, as we talked about in the first video, the speed is the middle number. So 80 tonne flow level 350, the speed we'll be looking at is 257 knots. For 75 tonne flow level 300, 245. So we're going to do the exact same thing as last time. We're just going to fill in the information we know and calculate the information we don't. So 80 tonne flow level 350, I can read off the table that it's 257, 253, 248, 245. Let's follow the same process as last time. Start with box 1, 2, and eventually find 3. Starting with 1, I'll go 257, take 253. Give me 4 knots. Divide that by 5, gives me 0.8. Times this number by 3, gives me 2.4 which I'll add on to my 253. Now I like to keep the numbers here to one decimal place and then at the very end, that number I can round to the nearest whole number. So 80 tonne of flow 330, I'll be writing down 255 decimal four. For box two, we'll go 248, take 245, gives us three. Divided by five is 0.6, times by three is 1.8. We'll add that onto our 245, 246 decimal eight. The last interpolation for box three, we'll go 255.4, take 246.8, is 8.6 divided by five, 1.72. We're only times in this by one because we're only going from 75 ton to 76 ton. And I'll be adding that number onto my 76 ton data. So the exact number this gives me is 248.52. This is the number that I'd round to the nearest whole, whole number. So I'd be writing 249 as my airspeed in this case. So for a 76 ton mid-zone weight, a flight level 330, the holding speed or the indicated airspeed that we'll fly when we're holding is 249 knots. Now in the exam, they want that answer in a true airspeed. So we're going to have to convert this from an indicated airspeed to a true airspeed. What we'll do, we'll use the whiz wheel. We'll be converting it from indicated airspeed to a mark number, and then from a mark number to a true airspeed using a calculator. Now the thing is, there's a direct relationship between indicated airspeed and mark number, which we've already talked about a little bit. So we can easily calculate the mark number, and we won't have to worry about any temperatures or anything like that until we convert it to TAS. Converting it to TAS from a mark number is really, really simple. We've been doing it on every single flight plan we've done so far. We just use a calculator method. So I'll get the whiz wheel out and we'll have a quick chat about it. Now we have the whiz wheel in front of us. I'm going to point out a couple of things and then we'll get into the example. We have this big window here. This is the calibrated airspeed versus pressure altitude section. Calibrated airspeed for intents and purposes is indicated airspeed. Pressure altitude essentially being altitude. So we'll be comparing the calibrated airspeed or indicated airspeed against the altitude. That's going to give us a mark number. Now the mark number box is over here. If you have the ASA whiz wheel, you might find the mark number box is somewhere up on the outside. So just have a look on the whiz wheel. It will be there. It just might be in a slightly different place. So we're going to be lining up. 249 knots indicated airspeed, which is what we just calculated, against a pressure altitude of 330, which is our flight level. So calibrated airspeed being in the white section and altitude being in the gray section. So flight level 330 is here and indicated airspeed of 249 is gonna be here. So line them up, 330, against 249. We'll come around to our mark number. 
that's going to show a mark number 0 0.705 or 71. Now, it's not unusual for you to have a slightly different mark number. That's okay. You might find it somewhere between 0 0.69 and 0 0.72. That's all right. That's going to be accurate enough for this exam. Now that we know the mark number, what we're going to be doing is working out the TAS using the calculator method. So it's dead simple. It's what you've been doing already. 1.98 times the flight level 33 minus 288. It's an ISO deviation of plus four, so I'm going to be subtracting four. Do the flow times 39 times 0 0.705, which is what we found on the whiz wheel. That gives us a true airspeed of 414 knots. So there's our answer. You can see it's not too bad. It's just one extra step to find that mark number. And then we use the normal calculator method